Hey everybody, Cynthia Allen here. I'm here with Margaret Kay, and I'm um, maybe going to be we're maybe going to be joined by Frederick Arafili. Uh, decided that she actually had to go ahead and get to sleep. She's been working double shifts for the last few days, so bless her heart for thinking she would make it. And Margaret, I'm so glad that you are making it. I know you're just getting up because in your part of the world, it's quite early. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you for taking the time to join us. If you are tuning in on either YouTube or uh, Facebook, please do that little thing where it says register at StreamYard so that we'll be able to see your name. So I so uh, appreciate Katerina uh, doing that because now I can see her name and she's got that beautiful, she's got a beautiful comment over here about uh, looking forward to hearing us talk. Oh, and when here comes here comes Frederick. Here comes yes. Frederick. Hey, we are on, Frederick. We are here. We are Hello. live. Hello. Just so you know, we are already live. I don't want you to like say something. You oh, know. okay. Say something that, uh, that you didn't realize everyone in the world was hearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so now we have Frederick Shang with us too. So uh, we're going to announce the winner uh, for sure. But also, uh, we want to kind of just do a little, I don't know, checking in and recap uh, for each with each other and with you. We would be thrilled to hear any questions or comments that you have. But otherwise, we're just going to have a nice time together. And then we'll eventually unveil the winner of the uh, Living in Me contest. And I'll also talk a little bit about the Flags contest. So... Wow, you guys, it wasn't, hi Donna, it wasn't exactly a completely new experience for you this year. You had a small version of it last year, but uh, this time you got to do it double duty, 48 hours. How are you doing? Margaret? How, how am I doing? Well, that was uh, an adventure, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> it is an adventure, isn't it? Isn't Every it? Of it. it was very immersive and I kept doing ATMs, awareness through movement lessons myself while people were online, whether I was hosting or not. And um, and then uh, I'd get so immersed in it, I'd forget that I was hosting it. I had to jump up and check everything was doing okay. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. For some reason, we're getting static on your sound now, which we weren't before, but I don't oh. know that. There's anything that you will be able to do about that? Let's see if, if that happens with Frederick. Let's see. Sure. Um, it sounds pretty good on my end. How does okay, it sound? Okay, so it's just on my end. Okay, then we're not going to worry. No, no, about no. It. I mean, when I talk, it sounds clear, but what I heard some static from Margaret also. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a, that's an odd one. I don't think I've ever heard that before, but we'll live with it. So, uh, how about you, Frederick? How was the experience for you? Um, it was fascinating um, to see so many different ways that people presented the method um, uh, from the athletic to the truly deeply internal looking at soft tissue, different relationships to gravity. Um, it was it was really fabulous. It really it got me inspired. Uh, I taught a lesson this morning. Actually, I, Margaret, I taught your lesson. Somehow or other, after for do, after doing all of that hosting, I got up at 6 a.m. New York time to do the final lesson with you. And I ended up doing that, the AY254, is that what it was? Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. Well, I, I did it from I did it from memory and from what you did, and it was wonderful. I just had a blast doing it. So it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, and to be part of... Uh, such a huge event that's global um, and well, double global. We went around the world twice uh, with so many fabulous teachers who brought their A game to the party. Mm -hmm. Everybody was really up. And I thought this is, this, it was amazing. It was like the best, it was the best. I thought so too, Frederick. And I thought the, the uh, range of styles this time was really striking and made me feel like, oh my gosh, uh, how did I not know about each of these people before? You know, like it's one of them I had not heard really ever teach. And I just felt like uh, it was a big awakening to when, I guess I would say when you get away from the people who studied directly with Moshe and you start to see how it's rippling out in the world, I think it's getting more creative. And uh 
I mean, I, I don't know that they would like to hear me say that, but that's what it felt like to me. Like there was more creative expressions in, in the styles of teaching and the styles of teaching. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. The diversity of this teaching styles was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, um, what I also learned um, was how many people joined us from how many countries around the world. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't do a survey this time asking specifically for people, but I know in past events that are re somewhat related, we've had over 50 or 60 countries at times, which I didn't even know there were that many. I'm like, really, there's that many? <laughs> uh, so I feel kind of embarrassed uh, about that. Um, but yes, so, so beautiful to, to see people from all over and so many people that were really new to the method. So I know that uh, there were certainly practitioners like ourselves back there. I see that we have with us today uh, also uh, uh, Kathy White and, oh, Nick Strasskline, of course, who actually taught in it, um, and uh, Katarita Patterson. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, yeah, here's, here's Nick's comment. Congratulations on a beautiful event. And we'll thank you, Nick, for teaching in it. And then also uh, Kathy White says, yes, it was so much more out of the box. The lines aren't as defined. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And then Katerina Patterson says, congratulations to the whole team. That was an amazing event that's still going on. And I certainly enjoyed all the teaching styles. So they're 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 with us on on that variety they're with us on that variety yeah it's amazing i want to uh look at how it is that we are doing so many different things in so many ways mm -hmm. and it is all still clearly feldenkrais mm -hmm. it's like that's I, I want to look at that and explore that like mm -hmm. that's amazing I remember uh, some people asked me a while back, they were doing a magazine article on me and they said, oh, we want to include a, a photograph. And they said, okay, we're ready. Do Feldenkrais. <laughs> ah! I was like, okay, you haven't heard a word I've said. <laughs> you heard word. Like, oh, really? And they said, no, we got to have a picture. You know, you got to have a picture. So I said, okay. <laughs> That's Feldenkrais, you know. <laughs> But, um, yeah. but, but maybe, maybe that's the contest we should have next. Take a picture of yourself doing Feldenkrais. Do Feldenkrais. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that's yeah. why, you know, I think that is an interesting, interesting thing right there for us to discuss is uh, it's very difficult to define because there's, you know, so you so you take a picture of a specific moment of a lesson. Well, is that really it? Right? Is that really it? It's not really it, is it? Mm -hmm. We do a lot of it. I do a lot of it. Hire a photographer to come and take those pictures, but but really, it's it's so much more about how does how does the how do we take those same principles into the world in action, isn't it? I think. I what found really fascinating um, amongst the teachers, <clears throat> and I know what the teachers that. I coordinated to come and join us but they have other skill sets too that they bring to the work um so we had an aikido teacher we had a speech pathologist for example and they immersed those into the work that skill set into the feldenkrais work and it was still feldenkrais um and I don't know how best to describe it, but Feldenkrais also had those kind of layers and layers of skill sets that he brought to the work. But it, it's Feldenkrais, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the how we've already, um, I mean, I think, how, I think the interests of people, whether they became Feldenkrais practitioners when they were in their early 20s and then went on to develop other interests or whether they started like myself later in life, late midlife, it wasn't later in life, but midlife. And I already had a long career uh, at that point. Um, 
that those things really influence how we interpret the work and how we teach and, and where, what we do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it means that the people who are on the other side, who are listening and participating in the um, ATMs that we were teaching over the 48 hours, they also brought their skill sets to it. In the conversations and the discussions, mm -hmm. they had queries and questions and comments that that related to who they were and what they understand about the world. And then we kind of immersed it all. And then there were these lovely um, analogies that a couple of people raised, which was, and I've never heard it before, that it was like a river, that there were streams of water and then they inter um, laced and went flowing down the river. Mm. That was beautiful. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And Straub said she wasn't able to do as much as she wanted to because of her uh, hectic schedule, but she's really grateful for the replays. Yes. So I want to remind people that the replays are up and through uh, Friday, May 6th, and if you're in the Eastern Daylight Time Zone. And, um, and uh, Nicolene says, congratulations on the beautiful summit. Thank you. We... we you know, it's actually not our summit. Our summit is coming in the fall this year. So just to tell you that this was, this is like the taster uh, event that we wanted to go ahead and hold something in May, but we weren't ready to hold the full 10 day summit in May. So we, we thought we could pull this together and, um, and really it, the reason it was able, we were able to pull it together is actually because of Margaret Frederick and Eric Philly, who went out and recruited the teachers and, and got things on that end ready so we could just spend the time on the technical issues. So I so appreciate uh, you all doing that. Um, Anne says, as to a picture, as a, to a picture, let's see if I can get this in front of me. Anne says, as to a picture of doing Feldenkrais, it wouldn't be immediately obvious to all, but really a photo of me doing anything I do could be construed as doing Feldenkrais. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, Frederick? Um, I think that that makes sense to those of us who understand Feldenkrais. I think somebody looking at it from the outside might just go, what does that mean? Um, right. Yeah, there. It, 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 I think we're at that place where what we're doing, the parameters, the walls are totally expanding, but there are still definitions of what we're doing and what we're not doing. And so I, I think that's, I think that for people to to know what this is, it's almost like falling in love or tasting chocolate or looking at a beautiful painting. You, you gotta come in, experience it and experience it more and more and go deeper into it. And then you go, ah, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Still mm -hmm. photograph of something doesn't capture the essence of all that's going on. It doesn't really come close. You can, if you've been in love, or you, if you've tasted chocolate, you can take a photograph of somebody and say, ah, that person's in love or that person's having something delicious. But if you haven't, then you don't know what that is. So anybody listening, you got to come take a few lessons. Yeah. So let's just do what Lenore did. She said, I did about 10 sessions. And at the end of the last session, it felt like my body moved itself without me directing it. Mm -hmm. that's delicious yeah, that's <laughs> to use frederick's word that's delicious <laughs> and actually donna says yum <laughs> yum <laughs> and ann says "Ooh!" so we've got a lot of i love ann says "Ooh!" i love appetizers <laughs> she's ready for the summit she's ready for the summit isn't she Listen, I want to go ahead and announce the winner and then let's keep on with these comments and let's see if anybody has any questions, particularly if you're someone who's new, um, would you, I would love, we would love to hear your questions or your experience. You know, we would love to hear from somebody who was pretty new to the work. Like you wondered, what the heck am I signing up for? And why am I here? And did I make a good decision or not? Or, and if you have something that you want to say that is not what you think we want to hear, we would like to hear it anyway. We love to hear these things. So go ahead and uh, pop it into the comments. But let's see first if we could do some kind of a drum roll. 
for the winner of the Living in Me contest. Okay, let's go to screen share here so we can find out who it was. I got it. I got it. I swear I got it. Okay, let's get to that. Here we go. So the winner is Judith Kahn. Uh -huh. Judith Kahn. And um, Judith Kahn submitted this incredible photograph of a mermaid of some kind. Actually, I think it's a, maybe a male mermaid, which is unusual. And she said, um, spending most of the past two days on the many car classes carefully, I feel I'm beginning to understand the underlying principles of awareness through movement, ATM, how to use intention, how to use more of my body and my daily movements in the class. Oh, we got a special mention by David Dan and the lower abdomen is the center of movement. We were on our stomach and moving our legs as a unit. I felt like a mermaid. So here's the picture. Thanks for all the wonderful events. Thank you for the wonderful events and the effort into organizing and the dedication of the coordinators. Yes. And teachers. Yes. And yeah. enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> the participants. <laughs> so what is it that uh, Judith won? Yeah. Well, Judith won um, a year long membership in my, your learning body uh, community. Let's see here. I got an accidental change in our screen layout. Let me try that again. There it is. Um, in our Your Learning Body community, which is an online Feldenkrais community. So you will get, uh, she will get access to classes, uh, pre-recorded videos and audio lessons and all kinds, probably more contact with me than she might ever want. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely a lot of contact with Feldenkrais lessons, a lot of contact with Feldenkrais lessons. So she'll get a chance to be part of that community. and. Um, yeah, that's so congratulations, Judith. We're glad that you submitted. And really, if you haven't read the Living in Me comments on the Facebook group and seen the pictures, they're quite touching. I mean, the pictures alone, we were just going for just the picture. I mean, the pictures alone are gorgeous and evoke a feeling. Each one of them, you like go, oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, as somebody who's done awareness through movement, which all of you now have done something, I think, uh, you'll, I think you'll get a sense of it. But, uh, but then some people like uh, Judith wrote a lot, which is not why she won. It was just a random drawing. And we happened to pick one that um, actually had written a nice little paragraph to go with it. So thank you, Judith, for that. So we're getting a little bit of feedback on it from uh, Katrina. I love the chili pepper ratings. I love them too. And I, I'm taking credit for chili peppers because that's been part of my membership for five years. And I, I like it a lot. And uh, I think it takes it away from the sort of standard, uh, standard sort of, uh, you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced, which I think is kind of misleading in its own self. So it leaves it a lot up to interpretation. What do you all think? I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant um, because there is a big issue. What really constitutes an advanced lesson? What, what makes it advanced? Is it... Uh, because it requires greater athleticism or greater uh, greater sovereignty over yourself as you're moving, greater sophistication and how do you distinguish between this and that. All of those things come into play. And uh, a beginner, intermediate, advanced suggests that there's a, a, there's a, a, a linear hierarchy, and it isn't. It, there's a lot going on from a lot of different places. And so, uh, and I think it also gets people questioning, like, why, what do you mean peppers? What's that about? Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, very fun. Oh, something happened. The screen. No, I'm trying. I'm playing with the settings. Uh, I'm seeing okay. if I can. Let me see what happens now. I can let you talk by yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'm going to play with the settings okay. while I'm here. I'm going to try to get to know StreamYard and play with the settings. Okay. Yeah. So I, I love the I love the idea of the peppers and um, and so so if if you hear me using that a lot in if you find me someplace, if you come to one of my classes in New York City and you hear me talking about peppers, this is the three pepper lesson. Take credit for it and don't get mad that I've stolen it. I won't. I won't get mad. Once you put something like this out in the world, you got to be willing to let it go. <laughs> you can't possibly hold on to it any longer. Uh, we have a great question from Nida, Nidai, Nidi, and I hope Nidai. What do you think? How do you, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Nidai. 
Okay. I hope it's right. Uh, and the question, of course, we can totally take, and I'm going to I'm going to see if I can spotlight Margaret as the first approximation on this. How does this work? I can't believe the effects. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a very big question, and uh, there are many, many answers. But effectively, um, it's about um, neurological learning. So it's not just about moving, because we can move in different contexts without really paying attention or following some instruction or using a machine. But when we pay attention, when we use our awareness, um, it highlights different parts of our wiring in our brain and um, um, the impact of that means that our brain what we wire together fires together is that is the terminology <laughs> so while we when we pay attention to something the awareness um, it literally will change something compared to when we don't. So, for example, when we lie down and rest in the middle of a lesson and we pay attention to our sensations, that's the, that's the nervous system processing. The brain is part of the nervous system processing the information and therefore remembering it and owning it, if you like. So it's not just about doing a movement, but it's about owning it. This suits me. Mm. I can do this. I will have this. Yes. This is me. It's not just about the movement itself. It's about my determination of who am I? What is my image of myself? Am I, am I a person that can, I don't know, roll over like a judo master? No. Oh, actually, I can be. I can reinterpret who I am as a person in the world and how I feel about myself. So the new terminology that we didn't have in the olden days was um, <laughs> having a blank now. Neuroplasticity is the new terminology that we use to describe this ability to change. And the ability to change occurs in so many ways, some of which I've described. We explore our habitual patterns of movement and then we, we develop curiosity about other patterns, some of which we've already had in our life. So, for example, some of the movements like rolling around like a baby, we did that probably as a baby, but we're repurposing it now as an adult with awareness. Another way that I describe it is... Um, Okay, so you take the high road and I'll take the low road. So what does that mean? It means, okay, I continue on this path and the path wears down so it's really accessible in the bush. And so I continue to use that path all the way. But then I remember that there's a low path and it actually suits me better. It has more efficiency and more fluidity and more flow. So if I start to take that low path, the, the, the ground adapts around me and I can now take either path. Mm. Process of neuroplasticity. I'll pause there. Yeah, that's lovely. I don't, I don't know that we can add anything to that. Uh, okay. Need I, I, I do think that the video that we have on the site on the, on your portal if you scroll down, you'll see it, uh, what is awareness through movement. I think it tries to make the way that it works more understandable um, in extraordinarily short sound bites. But, you know, humans are complex. We're, we're a system of uh, complexity. And so it makes sense that the, the way that our, we process experiences and that we learn and that we get better is not a simple bite-sized answer. Um, so yeah, something, something to, something for you to keep chewing on, and um, and maybe even if you don't understand it, you can still be so thrilled, like you say, be thrilled with the effects, right? Be thrilled with the effects. 
Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, can I jump in for a moment? Yeah. 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 I'd like to say, um, uh, I think if you want to become a practitioner, then you have to know how it works. You have to have a good sense of that. I think that if you want to live inside yourself in a way that's richer, knowing all the complexities of what is going on in a lesson, I don't know that you need to do that. Just like uh, when you first learn how to ride a bicycle, it's magical. The how much pressure you put on the pedal and how you balance and how you that you you figure it out, but you can't necessarily write an essay about it. But you don't need to because you're riding the bike. I think when it when when you're coming to lessons, particularly in the beginning, marvel at what is not magic but is magical, and just fall in love with it, and then keep going. And then if you decide you want to get, get into go go into a deeper understanding of what it is, there are lots of ways of doing that. But if you're new, I think just have a good time. I think just uh, enjoy yourself and say, wow, look at this. Isn't this amazing that I couldn't, you know, that which was impossible becomes well possible and easy and then elegant and then delicious. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, say with that, it's because it's, it's a, there's a reason why people all over the globe from over 50 countries tuned in to check out this stuff that most people can't even pronounce. So, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I would just add something there, Frederick. I think it's an illusion that practitioners know how it works. I uh, think I think it's an illusion that that hardly any of us know much about how the human system works. I mean, we know more than we ever knew, right, from science, but we're, we're not true scientists. And so we take what we think we understand from the scientific literature and we, we strain it through our minds, which are Feldenkrais practitioner minds, which are not the same as uh, somebody who spent their life understanding research papers. So I'm not really sure we know how it works. We, we do have a construct that we've kind of all kind of agreed on for the most part, and we seem to be pretty happy with it. But... Um, I'm guessing that we don't even have to know how it works in order to follow the work and make it really valuable for other people. And we trust our experience. That's what starts to really change is we trust our experience. We trust our experience. And that's a whole different idea, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't consider myself a neuroscientist, uh, but I know that if we, as we, as Margaret was saying, if we draw, if we shine the light of awareness on something and point our brain at it, uh, it is different. And, and I, I don't know if I, if that means I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, well, I think we can know what we're doing and not necessarily know all the mechanisms oh, sure, that sure. on in the human being. That's all I'm saying. Okay, cool. I, got you. I think we totally can know what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and we can see from the results that we get, the consistency of the results. We, we begin to trust those, not only trust ourselves as practitioners or trust ourselves as the person lying on the floor doing the lesson, but we also trust how other people are going to respond for the most part. So I'm going, to I'm going to take the next one. And uh, this one is from Barbara, who says, I'm disabled and I have challenges moving from one position to another. Frederick's talking us through the transitions was so helpful. And I encourage other teachers to consider doing this. Barbara, I so appreciate hearing from you because I do think that one of our weaknesses in the teaching in this summit was that we did not take into consideration the amount of people showing up that would need to do the lesson on their bed or in a recliner or in a wheelchair. Um, and I feel like uh, that's, that, that's sort of a failing of mine to have sort of given teachers a heads up. One of the things that I've noticed in teaching uh, thousands of people now online is because online is more accessible, I get more diversity in my classes. And many of these teachers have not been getting that diversity of physical experience in their classes because they've been teaching mostly in live settings where it would be difficult often for somebody with a disability to show up and make the transition. It's not simple to have spaces that handle all different types of situations. So I feel like that was a bit of a failing on my part and it was already something on my list for next time to start to give teachers uh, a heads up 
about uh, what their audience, the range of their audience and how they might do a better job in making those um, lessons accessible for more people. So I so, so appreciate that, uh, Barbara, from you. Thank you so much for that. Um, let's see here. Let me go back to, I, I'm just loving playing with these views now that I'm starting to figure it out. We have, <laughs> we have uh, from New Breath, I love the chats after the sessions glimpses and tastes of the bigger view of Feldenkrais of thinking and being. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. And we have Lisa. I didn't really know what felt, didn't really know. I don't really know what Feldenkrais is. And I only did about three sessions, but I was so taken by the listening with my hands and with Era Philly's session that I bought the package. It was, uh, and it was me emailing you. Well, that's fantastic. I, that was a really unique session. Arlene Klein, our coordinator for this event, was recommending to the team today that that might be a session that they would want to do because they've all been uh, given the opportunity to make sure that they do one lesson, at least before we get back together and talk again, so that they can have a Feldenkrais experience and not just be uh, working, working, working on making these things happen. So we have to build in purposeful opportunities for them to have Feldenkrais. And she was saying she thought that the the listening hands, was that in your who's who who hosted that? Was yours, Margaret? Yeah. That was yeah. Uh, Sylvie, I think, did that. Yeah. yeah. It was nice. Very nice. Yeah. It's not as clear in my mind any either. And about the replays, yeah, you, you know, you do have the access to the replays, but as um, they have been mentioning throughout the series and we've tried to do an email, you can still get the upgrade for $68. That's like a dollar 40 something a lesson. So it's pretty, pretty good. And that's before you get the uh, um, many, many, many short video audio series from past summits. Now we've got a very specific question. And I think this is a good one for you, Frederick, because you are in this exercise world. Lisa says, I have a question and I'm new. I keep waking up with a stiff neck. Any recommendations from the replays? I might be able to help with that or from Feldenkrais in general that would help me. I think it's because I exercise a lot. Hmm. 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 What do you think, Frederick? Yeah, um, it could be because you exercise a lot uh, in a particular way. Uh, when we exercise the three area the tr three traditional areas of exercise are strength training where you overload the muscle you ask the muscle to do more than it would when you're strength training there then it gets stronger you also um when you're doing cardiovascular cardiopulmonary training you get your heart rate up you tax it more than you would ordinarily and that makes it stronger even with flexibility work you take the origin and the insertion of the muscle and you pull them apart and maybe do some neurological tricks, overloading. What we do in Feldenkrais is we underload. We do less than we can, and I'll use that phrase again, shine the light of awareness on what's happening. And just as a baby completely focuses on what's going on so that their big bulbous body can stand up over these two tiny feet, and that's impossible, but they figure it out, and they get they somehow do that or when you ride a bicycle you figure it out what by doing lessons like this you spend time with yourself and you see what feels good to you and we as a species are attracted to that which feels good which is efficient so you will discover when you slow things down how to go oh how does that work something you can't do when you're in a jumping up and down class those classes are really good, but if you're exercising a lot, maybe take some time away from doing the traditional exercises in those three forms. Take some Feldenkrais lessons and then introduce this, then introduce that and see does what what brings it back and what might you be doing that is that that's creating that. Um, I don't know you, I, I can't see you, so I can't give a diagnosis. I don't do that anyway. But that's I think that's the best strategy. Spend some time with Feldenkrais. Take a look at what you're doing. What 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 do you do when you do this? What do you do when you do that? Really slow things down and then um, spend some time with that. See if the neck pain just goes away. And then from there, uh, start reintroducing the exercise program. 
Mm. Yeah, I think I, I love how you said that it, it's maybe how you're doing it. And I think that's where the carryover, you have to have a certain amount of the work in your system before you start to say to yourself, how is it that I'm, how is it that I'm initiating that, that leg lift or that leg press or that uh, dead lift or that, you know, whatever it is you're doing. Um, oh, Lisa says, thanks very much. I think it's the way I lift my arms. Yeah. So great, great, Lisa. I think, I think you'll get, you know, you'll get more and more curious about it. So now you all have been doing such a good job, all these comments that Chen Cheng Cheng, I hope that's right. Cheng says, sounds good. Please post the link to the summit replay. I'd like to try. So here's what happens. If you didn't register, you can still register and do the replays, even though the May 1st and May 2nd is done, you can still register and do the replays. And you would do that by going to heldenchristsummit.com. Let me try to get that little ticker up there for you. Um, and they'll, you should get an email pretty doggone quickly that gives you access to the replay. So go ahead and do that for sure. Go ahead and do that. Let's see if I got it. Did I get it? Oh, I got oh, it. Wow, look at that. Scroll across the bottom for you thing. Right. <laughs> I couldn't get any happier with myself. <laughs> um, and um, Margaret is putting up her picture of herself from a few years ago in case she had to you know, step off the screen. Now we can see her in her younger years. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm just having computer issues uh, here today. <laughs> um, Lila. Go ahead. Picture of myself. I'm going to tell you what it is. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so um, that's me when I started my training. <laughs> that's lovely. Um, I'm just trying to get the plug to work. <laughs> uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Now, where are we? Oh, we've shifted at the position now. Okay. <laughs> we're pros. Oh, we're pros see. at StreamYard. Oh. You can see that. We really know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing that we pulled this event off, isn't it, people? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think we all learned a lot. Did you like, paint that, that, Margaret? Who painted it? My mom did. Margaret. Your mom oh. did. Oh, my goodness. My, mom, my mother painted it. All right, so it's so it's when I, I had a disability, I was unable to move for ten years, pretty much. Um, oh, here we go. I just had to unplug my iPad. There we go. And uh, I was unable to move to to work for many many years, and um, that's me at that stage. Um, oh. I was disabled, and uh, just it's, I was just referencing it because of the neck issue. So actually, um, I had repetitive strain injury to, uh, to the severity that they'd never seen before. And uh, I lost all my muscle mass after not moving for many years because of the pain that I was in. So that's me at that stage. And then I started my training. And now I can do most things, except I won't hang off a monkey bar. Wow. How extraordinary. Thank you so much for sharing that. that I think that's so important that we share those stories because sometimes people think that, you know, we didn't have issues and that's why we got into it, but we all got, almost all of us got into it because we had some pretty significant issues. Yeah. 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 Let's take a listen from Lila. I'm loving these comments. This is a very lively group. So Lila says, I congratulate you for producing such an extraordinary event and so well organized. I'm in New York City. I invited some of my friends in Argentina to re register and I translated a lesson simultaneously. Oh, wow. That definitely deserves some applause, Lila. And they, she says, and they loved it. They loved it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, good, good. Good. Um, okay, so then Barbara is adding uh, from her earlier comment about the transitions for next time, it would be tremendously helpful in having info in the descriptions of the lesson that highlight may be done from a chair or in some way other than uh, in addition to the chilies. Yeah, 
me. Thanks. Thanks for that, Barbara. We'll see what we can do. Um, the real estate on schedules and things are always like such a major th thing to navigate. And as soon as we add one more thing, we add uh, hundreds more questions. So uh, <laughs> we like always like trying to streamline that real estate to make it as clear as possible and not confuse everybody. So that'll take us some intelligent thinking on our parts. But I like that idea. And Ann Straub says, go Lila. Well, this is this is lovely. I want to tell you, um, in case any more comments come in and then you, the three of us can chat a little bit more. I want to tell you about the new contest. So we now have a new contest, which is another chance to win a year in the Year Learning Body Online Feldenkrais community with me. And that contest is collecting the flags. So it's hashtag flags. And all you need to do, Margaret, we're going to have to remove you, dear. <laughs> you're, you're like... You're like a wild card okay, here. Not you're, yourself. You're, you're a wild card here, sister. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna come back on my computer now. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can take you off for a moment. Okay. <laughs> she's adding spice to it, isn't it? She's giving us she's making she's making our broadcast uh, a, a four chili pepper broadcast <laughs> for the organizer anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, um, the new tech contest is flags and you only need to collect seven flags. And what does that mean? Well, we had teachers from 20 different countries. So if you do a lesson from seven different countries, you download the flags card, it shows the different flags of the countries. You do kind of have to look up on the schedule to see where that teacher's from and if you've done seven different lessons or you do before the end of the replay period, seven lessons from seven different countries, you just check it off and you post the picture of your completed flag card in the uh, Facebook group, in the Facebook group. So that's where all contests go is in the Facebook group. So just want to make that clear. Um, and... Yes. So um, Margaret looks like she's still struggling back there. So we'll let her struggle around. And Lisa says, can you talk about Feldenkrais for sleep? I also bought the package for the audio series on sleep and once heard a brilliant recording by Margaret. How does it help? Mm -hmm. How does it help? Frederick, do you want to jump in on that one? Sure. Um, there's a there's a colleague of ours who, who found that when he was teaching, um, people would start snoring. <laughs> and he found that people were just falling asleep all the time. And so in a very Feldenkraisian way, he said, well, let's go with what we've got going here. Um, I'm able to put people to sleep. Uh, that was not my intention. What if I make it my intention? And he developed a program called the Sounder Sleep Program where he, um, it's not exactly Feldenkrais, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of what we do in a Feldenkrais uh, lesson to calm the nervous system, to quiet the internal turbulence that can get in the way of sleep. So um, Feldenkrais is not a sleep training program. That's not what it is, but it does, it, it meant most of the lessons, many of the lessons, um, will take you to a place where your, your heart rate will slow, where your blood pressure will lower, where uh, I know people, people who are uh, diabetic tell me that their sugar levels go down. And, um, and, and so those things which stimulate the nervous system we go to more of a place of relaxation. Now, it's not just relaxation. That's not what we're doing. We're taking you to a place of relaxation so that you can see. Like in, in calm water, you can, you can see what's happening when you go snorkeling. When the water is turbulent, the sand is up and then you can't see. So we're doing that. But it's the calm that is, that is on the way to sleep. That, that we create. But again, we're not doing it so that we sleep. We do it so that you can see in, in, the, in the quiet. So mm. does, that, does that answer your question? Mm. I like that. I'm going to add 
add uh, Margaret back in here and let's see if she wants to add anything to that since she referenced Margaret that she once did a brilliant lesson of yours on sleep. I don't know if you can remember anymore what brilliant lesson on sleep you might have ever done, but I can't hear you. Uh, I don't hear the sound. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let you test your microphone on your own. Let me um, take you back out here while you test your microphone at the bottom of your screen there. You can see um, settings and there's a place to test your mic. Uh, what was his name? His name was Michael Krugman and he has a whole body of work called Sound of Sleep that's based in not only Feldenkrais, but Eastern medicine and the many things that he discovered for himself in his own uh, problem with insomnia. One of the main major differences between his work and the Feldenkrais method is uh, the Feldenkrais method is constantly asking questions of differentiation. And that actually is stimulating, right? It keeps your mind stimulated because we're about learning uh, what else we can do and how else we can do it. Where Michael's work is more about how can we calm the mind? So he's the only kinds of questions he's asking is does this make you calmer or does this make you calmer? And you always go with the one that makes you calmer, always. So um, it's a little different than Feldenkrais in that way. And also the movements are so, so tiny and beautiful, but I definitely think it's worth checking out that program for sure. It's a good, it's a good program. Um, yes, and Katerina has put up some information on it saying, um, let's see, the insomnia solution, the natural drug-free way to a good night's sleep. Yep. No, that's it. That's it. Uh, so Donna says, when she first began your learning body, she's in the uh, community with me. She said, I was like, I never want to move fast again. <laughs> I think that's such an interesting uh, stage, isn't it? Where I think a lot of us have this stage where we go through where we're like, my gosh, this feels fantastic. Why would I ever want to rush at anything, right? Um, but then you start to include all of life. So sometimes you can go fast and sometimes slow. What do you think, Frederick? I think Margaret's still struggling. I, I had a, an interesting experience with someone who's become a very, very dear friend of mine, a very elegant woman who came dressed to come to Feldenkrais class with jewelry on and looking like a movie star. And she said, oh, I heard your class is a wonderful class. And she got down on the floor and we did an ATM, an awareness through movement class. And at the end, in her very polite way, she said, oh, it was a pleasure meeting you. It was wonderful meeting you. You seem like a very nice fellow. In other words, I am never going to see you again. <laughs> well, it turns out that she's a marathoner. And uh, she listened to what I said during the lesson and she did it. When the, so she went home and the next day she went out and ran. And she said, wait a minute. I'm running faster than I have in years. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I worked harder. I worked less hard. I efforted less. It was easier. What, what could it be? If I'm going to take my hat off because I shaved my head. She said, well, what's the difference? She said, maybe it has something to do with that, that big bald headed guy and the thing I did with him yesterday, that crazy class. <laughs> and, uh, um, and she said, you know, we did all these slow internal things and now I'm running faster than I have in years. Maybe there's something better. I'm hearing some feet. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's coming, coming from Margaret, Margaret having two having sound services. You need to turn one of them off, one, one of your speakers off. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me okay. now? We hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear you. So, um, so this is my trademark. This is part of my Caribbean privilege. I get to wear a house like this. Um, uh, it was in his contract. Sorry. <laughs> it <was in> contract. <laughs> it's actually a little. Uh, well, whatever. It's just some stuff I I'm have. I'm teasing you. And, um, but uh, my. Um, yeah, so I think it's great to, I mean, it feels, well, I'll go back to that word delicious, to move slowly and really explore that. But, but, but as Cynthia was saying, uh, it enables us. Uh, there, there's so much else that we can do, and we can enjoy those things, too. So, um, uh, and, and have all, you know, so, so you have the ability to walk through the park and enjoy all the flowers that you see because you're going for a stroll. But if you're racing to get to Feldenkrais class on the other side of the park, you also can pick up the tempo and do that better because of Feldenkrais uh, lessons. So I think that's, um, yeah, I think all, that all tempos become more available to us and we can enjoy them all more. Mm -hmm. 
Anne says, go slowly, quickly. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Anne. That's true. That's true. Well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up here. I want to say that we had 13,000 people, 13,000 people. And if you wanted to still share it with someone, you could and send it to Feldenkrais uh, Summit.com. And uh, they can just tell them, don't worry about the fact that it says May 1st and 2nd, because you get all the replays. And, uh, and then uh, you can also upgrade for, you know, $68 and a dollar 40 something a lesson. So you could do that as well. And you can enter the flags contest and still win. Uh, a, a membership that we charge $497 for. So totally a nice little gift for a year of exposure to Feldenkrais. And, um, and thank you, Nettie. Nettie says Nettie rhymes with Betty. I think I, I'm, if I can remember that until next time will be great. But thank you so much for that lesson. I appreciate that. And makes it very easy for me. And uh, yeah, so what would you, I want to give Margaret and each of you a, some, a little one sentence, something you'd like to say as we're wrapping up our time together for this round. Margaret, do you, can we hear uh, you yeah. there? You think, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Two hear. things, uh, the, just in relation to the sleep and sorry about the glitches, but um, I have got a recording that I made. Um, it's a bit different to the sound of sleep system, but it's called Sleep Easy. Um, and I developed it based on the Feldenkrais method. And anybody who wants to can send me a message and, and uh, I'll send it to them for free. What's your uh, email site? Uh, so my Feldenkrais, my site is um, feldenkrais.net.au. Feldenkrais.net.au. Okay. That's right. And just email me. No, that's, that's good. They'll, they'll, get, they'll get to email you from the site. We don't want to give out yeah. your email address on these videos. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, in addition, I'd just like to say um, I, I've loved every moment of this, but what's been the most amazing for me and the, the bit that's just warmed my heart so much is seeing everybody from all around the world. And when we had the chats, we would say, where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And I, I feel like it's something that Mr Feldenkrais would have loved because I, I just remember a quote that he said something like this, I, and I can't find the quote, but something like this where he said, um, if you pay attention to yourself and move easier, change your self-image, we will have peace in the world. Mm. That's, I'm going to leave it on that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me grab... Um, let me grab, I don't have it quite down to an art here. I can't really quite like make it, make it nice. Let me grab here, Frederick, invite Frederick to do the same. Sure. Um, I would like to say um, thank you for creating uh, an opportunity for so much of, uh, so many of us in these crazy times where we're battling a, uh, battling a virus and wars are breaking out for us to have a chance to to get together and explore something peaceful and empowering uh, uh globally really global i mean double globally that that to me is is amazing and uh, to be a participant in it as both a teacher and as a host for north and south america was a real honor and um something that it was exhausting but it was also exhilarating and um and to follow up on what Margaret said, uh, I, I think I heard a quote, someone saying that, that Michelle Feldenkrais said that if everyone got up in the morning and did a Feldenkrais lesson, there would be no wars. Uh, basically the same same idea, but phrased differently. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, again, thank you to everyone for, for, for coming and participating in this incredible event, uh, whether it's your first time ever taking a class, or you're a practitioner, or you taught, or or you ran the thing. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I really, um, I really appreciate it. It's, it's such a, it's such a um, honor to, uh, and I wouldn't say stumble across exactly stumble across this way of being able to reach people, but because I certainly have been working for many years on how to have an online presence. 
Um, but, but there are definitely elements here of just pure stumbling that made it happen or coincidence that made it happen. And, um, and, and I, I knew it was important. I always knew it was important, but I have to be honest that I didn't really realize the degree of impact it could have on people's lives in an online format. I didn't, didn't realize the, the depth of it and the depth is extraordinary in an online format. It's extraordinary. And, uh, and I also didn't realize how much I would enjoy teaching online. And I have really come to enjoy teaching online and building relationships with, with uh, people like Donna and Kathy. And uh, I know there was other names above, but they're already getting out of my, out of my mind from that they're in my, my, you know, online classes on a regular basis. And, uh, and I miss them and I'm glad to see them back when we start another, you know, another series. So it's, it's, um, it's really an extraordinary opportunity. And I'm so thrilled. I remember my first summit where uh, I was hosting, Lavinia was hosting, and I remember how hard it was to work. And I also remember the exhilaration of it. And I'm really glad that Frederick, Margaret, and Eric Philly um, have got to experience that because it is its own animal of um, of uh, pleasure and challenge and uh, putting yourself out there in ways that you might not have thought to put yourself out there and stretching your envelope. So congratulations to the three of them on stretching their envelope and coming up to the, up to the four. And then to all the teachers that have done the same because you know, a lot of the teachers had not been doing much online before COVID. And, um, and so many of them have been online a bit, but not as much as some of the rest of us. And so this was a big deal for them too. So big thanks to them. And of course, all of you participants who were just brave enough to show up, um, show up and uh, be there, be there for us to help us, uh, help us um, give you the experience. You know, we have to have an audience. And you're the audience. And Donna, thank you. Yes, I'm. I feel very lucky too that uh, we fell into each other's coincidence. So that's very sweet. Okay, everyone. This is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cynthia, for everything. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And of course, we want to thank our beautiful team. We're going to have something out on our beautiful team. Our team is so large now, and uh, and they just make it every year better and better. And uh, and we want to brag on them. So I'm not sure when we're going to get that together because, uh, but we're, we're going to get that together because they're all part of, as someone just said, uh, creating these bridges and they're all part of that, creating the bridges too. So I'll probably be checking in with you next week on Monday, the 8th to announce the final winner. Oh, Lori, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, um, the final winner. So um I'll be back sometime next week. Pardon? Do you know what time that will be? I don't Monday? know. I haven't. I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay. Well. That's terrible. I know, but I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you.